Today is, as she had mentioned, what we call Palm Sunday. And she put it up there. And, um, and so um, we want to just spend a little bit of time um, looking at the scripture that talks about, you know, the tri- what they call in the scripture the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And that's where the leaves, the palm branches um, and leaves come into play and we're going to see that. So what we're going to do is open to Matthew chapter 20, 21 and we're going to read the first nine verses and, and see the origin of the Palm Sunday. Um, it begins with like this, Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, that, that Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied to, the colt, tied to a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. The first thing I want to um, say to you as we read this scripture is that Jesus is speaking, and he says, which it's highly probable, if somebody went into your driveway and... and uh, you know, your keys were in the car and just got in your car and started to turn it on, getting ready to drive away. You might say something, right? <laughs> Their mode of transportation <laughs> that was in the driveway <laughs> of their house, the donkey way. Why do we, we park on driveways and drive on parkways? Only in America. Have you ever thought about that? I think about stuff like that sometimes. Anyway, my mind is just different today. Pray for the pastor. I got five more days of intensity, and then I'll I'll have ten weeks of putting it into effect to really learn it. They said you you just won't retain everything, so we'll be okay. But it says that he said the Lord has need of them. If they say something to you, which they likely did, you say the Lord has need of them. Jesus referred to himself as Lord. So when you have people from other religions or non-religions and say Jesus was just a man, um, he never never claimed to be God, we will see from passages we read today him referring to himself as the Son of Man and we know there's a reason for that. Because he had to be a human to take our place to bear the sin of the world. But it didn't take away the fact that he was God and that he was Lord. And he referred to himself as Lord. So if anybody ever tells you Jesus never referred to himself, oh yes he did. He also recognized, uh, acknowledged his kingship, his lordship, his God nature by receiving worship from people. Because no human being is to be worshipped. The scripture is very clear about that. And yet Jesus received worship. He said, the Lord has need of them. Does that help you? And so you have have a place you know where you can go. You know, um, if somebody gives you that. Now if anyone, uh, I'm sorry, um, and immediately he will send them. When you say that, the spirit of the Lord will move and that person will say, okay, and let, let you drive their donkeys out of the driveway. Okay. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Now I want to remind you just again as we get ready to read that, we see in the Gospels numerous times these kind of reference. This was done in order that it be fulfilled. Or all this was done that it might be fulfilled by the prophet saying, by the prophet or the, the, of the scripture saying, and, um, and Jesus fulfilled, as we have taught in our prophecy series and in our prophecy updates, multitudes of scriptures, um, and it is beyond any mathematical um, possibility of the, to fulfill that many things in, that, in this kind of detail if it, if it wasn't God who, who saw the future. Because there's just so many. So it says that it would be fulfilled saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, 
the foal of a donkey. Not only did it say that you're, the king is coming, the Messiah is coming, the king of kings is coming and riding on a donkey, but it'll be on the foal of a donkey. And isn't that what he said? Go to this place. It was a word of knowledge he was operating in by the Spirit. And he says, go to this place and you will see a donkey and it's foal. It's colt. Um, so he rode on the foal and they put the other stuff on the, on the colt and they came in. It's just God knows what he's talking about and in such detail. A colt, the foal of a donkey. What is the, yeah, the colt is the foal, the, the baby donkey. Okay, I'm, I'm getting it backwards. Um, because it wasn't just a donkey, which is what I started to say, and then my mind swished again. Um, it wasn't just a donkey, but it was the colt or foal of the donkey, which I think foal is female. Is that why what they say, like a deer, is a doe is a female baby deer? Or a fa- no, just a female deer. I think that's what a foal is, is a female. I don't know, though. But a baby donkey. And, and it happened. God knew that that would happen, that the Messiah would come in riding on a donkey. And so the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded, and they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. This is where the palm branches come from and why we call this Palm Sunday. They cut down these, these if you've ever seen a palm tree, these big you know, it's a branch of leaves that go out both ways, all the way along. And they were laying them. They laid their clothing. Have you ever seen in the days when they would call it chivalry, where a man, you know, uh, in the days when they would have carriages and dirt roads and, and all that, and, and the, the lady in her nice long uh, Victorian dress or Western dress, if it was in the Western days, um, would be ready to walk off into that road and it was muddy and, and the guy would do this and let her walk on that and then step into the carriage that she was getting in and they called that chivalry. And, you know, and it was just to honor that, that woman that she was, more, she was important and shouldn't soil herself like that. Well, they're honoring, worshiping, and this is what I mean by he received worship. They're worshiping, honoring Jesus, and they're laying their clothing so that the donkey would ride. But in addition to that, they're putting these palm leaves. They're making, it's better than a red carpet. It was just putting out, it was, it was, it was like what we would call rolling out the red carpet. It was their form of rolling out the red carpet to honor. And that's what <coughs> was going on. <coughs> And so, uh, so they spread the palm branches on the road with the clothing. And then the multitudes who went before those <clears throat> who followed cried out, saying, and this is why the song choice today, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And this is the fulfillment of prophecy they were worshiping Him and doing what the prophets saw by the Spirit centuries before. And now, Messiah has come. And they, and they are worshiping Him as God and King. Their God King, the Lord. And He's receiving this. He, he arranged for the donkeys to come so that He could come in. And he knew they would be doing that. And he received that. He didn't say, stop, stop, I'm just a man. It's inappropriate. Remember when they tried to do that with, with, with Peter and John? Remember when they tried to do that with Paul on the island of Mylita? Stop that. Remember when John went to heaven in a vision? God brought him up to heaven and showed him heaven and gave him the, re- the revelation that we read. And, and the angel said, don't worship me. When he spoke to the one, you know, um, uh, believer up there, it's like, no, I'm just, I'm just a saint like you. 
man is never to receive worship. And yet Jesus received that. He's God, and I want you to know that. He is the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. That's saying He's the Messiah. He is the King, the eternal King who will come and reign on the throne. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes, the, the called one, the predicted one, the Savior of the world. And then again, Hosanna in the highest. Above all human beings, you are God. Can we say, can you see those words on the screen? Can we declare that ourselves this morning? I know He already came. He already entered Jerusalem. He already suffered. But isn't it good to just say, blessed is He who, you know, um, who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is Him. Acknowledge that He's God ourselves. Let's worship Him on this Palm Sunday. So together, let's say, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's just praise Him for a moment. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are You, Lord. We worship You, Lord. Worthy are You, Lord. You are the King. You are the King. The, the, the Son of David. The King of kings. The One who will rule from that throne for all of eternity. We worship You, Lord Jesus. We worship You, King Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy are You, Lord. Hosanna to the Son of God. Hosanna in the highest. We worship You. We praise Your name. Hallelujah. And so Jesus enters in. Now a lot of people at that time, maybe including the disciples, were thinking that Jesus was coming in there to assume the throne. To go in and conquer Rome and and then sit on the throne of David from the temple. But that wasn't to be because it wasn't meant to happen in the first coming because God had to solve a problem. And I've got to speed through this to get there. Um, I didn't pay attention wh what exact time I started. If anybody noted that, um, give me a 10-minute countdown and then give me a 5-minute countdown if anybody noticed when I started. Um, <laughs> And so that I can be done after that half hour. But I wanted to put a focus because it's Palm Sunday on that. And then we'll get through the rest. So they're expecting him to come in and be that. But see, God had to solve a problem. And we're going to get to that scripture to show that. But let me say it like this. In the first coming, Jesus came as the Savior. He came as a humble servant to sacrifice himself to restore us to God. And we're going to see that as we read what he did to make that happen. I'm not going to expound on it in great detail because we've taught it before. And, um, and Palm Sunday, we've touched the scripture that we need to. Um, but we, we, we have to remember that he entered Jerusalem not to assume the throne, but he entered Jerusalem to end on the cross. And that is important. So I want to take a moment, because we're going to celebrate the resurrection next Sunday, obviously. I want to take a moment to read a few scriptures of why he entered into Jerusalem gloriously. Because he, made the, he, did, he, he, provi he gave the greatest gift, his life. He shed his blood. And I know I've talked to you about that and I'm not going to get into that kind of detail, but let me give you an, a, a reflection because I know you've heard me describe the, the process of crucifixion and how it was a, a, an extremely painful suffering and, um, and it was a, an asphyxiation. It was a suffocation that was going on slowly and that would happen over the course of many hours that would span sometimes several days that they would be pushing up and pulling on the nails like I've talked about. But they were surprised when Jesus had died. And why was that? Because He was scourged. And He was shedding His blood. And so the Bible tells us that there is life in the blood. So while He's up there going through that process and having to do that to get a breath, because you can't breathe when you're suspended, 
So every time to get a breath, he had to do that over six hours. But he did that as a mangled person bleeding profusely. The life is in the blood. The natural life is in the blood. And that blood was draining from him. So he was, he was, being, he was going through the process of asphyxiation, but also of great hemorrhaging. And that's why he died six hours later and they were so surprised. That's what Jesus did. And that's what he was entering Jerusalem to do. So let's read a few scriptures um, as we get there. So what we see is Palm Sunday and next week is Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday that we have become familiar calling it. But in between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, the way I like to refer it, what is there? There's Good Friday. And, and, and you may say to yourself, what, what is good about Friday? You just described human torture. You described great suffering. Believe me, I didn't describe <laughs> what Jesus fully went through. I saw a couple depictions of Jesus after scourging that I had never seen before and they were the most realistic I ever saw and it just takes your breath away. It was so shocking. But let's look at Good Friday and then you know um, move forward and see what He accomplished by dying for us. Good Friday is also known as Holy Friday. It is the Friday immediately preceding Easter Sunday. It is the day on which Jesus was crucified. See, we shouldn't just remember Christ's death once a year on Good Friday. Um, we should remember it all the time, and the Scripture instructs us to do that, and that's the reason why we have communion on a regular basis. In 1 Corinthians 11, 24 through 26, which we read to you each month when we do communion. By the way, um, uh, the prophecy update normally happens on the last Sunday of the month. We're not going to do that because it's Resurrection Sunday. Um, but we're going to, and then we do communion on the first Sunday. We're going to have communion on Easter Sunday. Um, so we're taking, eliminating the prophecy update and moving communion up a week. Okay, so. Um, so we'll do that because we want to remember but in that it says and I just put a little summary of it up on the screen do this in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes it is very important to remember not only that Jesus is alive and we should be singing that and declaring that he is alive he has risen you saw my title sermon for next week but we never should forget that he died and that's why he had to rise and it was all of utmost and essential importance what the Jewish and the Roman authorities did to Jesus wasn't good <laughs> so why is it called Good Friday because the results of what Jesus accomplished is so good that that passion that death that suffering that shed blood is what gives us salvation. He had to resurrect. He had to rise in order to implement that and take that blood and present it to the Father. And we're going to see from a few scriptures I'm going to read to you that Jesus connects the death and the resurrection over and over. So that's the results that are good. It's that shed blood, as horrible as it was, was and how that occurred it had to happen but the, 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 the nature the sin nature the corruption of God's created spirit beings that we are the price had to be it was great this wasn't as we would say in modern western uh society and, and in America it wasn't a misdemeanor or a little civil offense even less than a misdemeanor just a little civil thing it was beyond the, 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 it was felony level but multiple felonies 
as I've shared before. If you just add up, if you only sin three times a day, and when you think about that sin can be what you do, but also what you don't do that you should do, three times sins a day is what you would really call a pretty good person. <laughs> I remember when I took Evangelism Explosion in an illustration, it's like, you'd be practically a walking angel. <laughs> and uh, But you add three sins a day over the course of the year, that's over a thousand transgressions, a thousand violations of the law of God on your record. You live 77 years old, you've got 70 good years of, of, account, of the age of account, past age of accountability, you live 77 years old, that would be, say, you get saved at 7 years old. That's 70,000 violations of the law of God on your record in your lifetime when you go to face the Lord. And back to evangelism explosion, they say, if you went to a judge and he saw, opened up your case file and saw over 70,000 violations, priors, <laughs> he wouldn't put you in jail, he'd bury you under the jail. <laughs> and so with great sacrifice Jesus paid that price and the result was good it says it like this in Romans 5 8 but God demonstrated his own love toward us that while we were still sinners Christ died for us and in 1 Peter 3 18 according to the Amplified it says it like this for indeed Christ died for the sins for sins once for all just and righteous, the just and righteous for the unjust and unrighteous, the innocent for the guilty, so that or in order that he might bring us to God. That's what this week is about. That's what Palm Sunday is about. That he came in to do something that they had no idea that he was going to do, but we needed it. was essential because we were separated from God because of our sin. And by doing what He did, He brought us to God. Oh, hallelujah. Can you say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He brought us to God. He did it to bring us back to God. Having put to death in the flesh, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Our spirits were dead. His Spirit had to die so that it could come back to life. And then, give us new life because our spirits were dead and he makes us a new creation born again even as he was hallelujah born of the spirit made alive in the spirit the first fruits of the resurrection from the dead oh hallelujah see as I said, Jesus ties His death and resurrection together because both are essential. And I want to just give you three quick scriptures. Um, Mark 8.31, He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He must be killed, He must die, and then three days later He will rise again. And then, and then he, he predicts His own death again in Mark 9. And so in another time, he says, he taught his disciples and said to them, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, in other words, after he is dead, he dies, he will rise the third day. A second time, he's predicting his death, but he connects the death and the resurrection. And that's what my goal is for you to do today. To remember the resurrection, not forget the, the death, because both are what bring us our salvation. And a third time in Mark 10, Jesus predicts his own death and resurrection, where he says, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will arise again. How did Jesus know? that the chief priests would arrest him and try him in their Sanhedrin court and convict him unjustly and then turn him over to the Gentile court because the Jews didn't have the authority to give the death sentence. So he turned him over to the Gentiles, the Romans, so that he could be condemned to death. 
And he not only said, will they do that, but they will mock him. They will scourge him. They will spit on him. And they will kill him. He knew. In Mark chapter 15, verse 16 through 20, and verse 21 through 32, I'm not going to read these for time's sake. You see them doing those very things. Mocking him, putting on a robe and a crown of thorns. They spit on him, they punched him out. They, it says in there, they worshipped him but it was a mock worship and they scourged him let's go to Mark chapter 15 though where Jesus actually dies on the cross we're, we're going to go through past all of that for time's sake but in Mark 15 it says when the sixth hour had come and I had told you that after six hours on that cross it was three in the afternoon and, and it just happens to be that the six hours was the sixth hour. Just, you know, that's, you know, got hung on the cross at nine in the morning and, and, and was there until three in the afternoon when he, when he, when the spirit left his body. It was the sixth hour, uh, I'm sorry, uh, ninth hour, okay. Ninth hour, Jesus cried out saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, um, the, the, yeah, because 12 o'clock, and so the 3 o'clock is the ninth hour. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. The sixth hour is new. So, okay. So, um, so he got hung on at 9 in the morning, the third hour, and he was, the sixth hour he cries out, I don't know, I'm, my brain's mushy. I'm not even going to try to t- figure that out. He was on the cross for six hours. That's what my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What does that mean? What is the importance of that? Some of you may have had your head tilt when I said Jesus died spiritually. Jesus, you just said he's God. Sin separates us from God. He did this to get us, to bring us to God, to bring us back to God. But to do that, he had to represent us. And he did that by becoming sin for us. He never sinned. But he became, he who never sinned became sin for us in order for us to live. When he became sin, taking all the sin, everything you've ever done, into himself and became sin, Having never sinned, but became sin. Now the Father can't look upon that sin. He separated from the Lord. Why have you forsaken me? He who is God, God the Son, had never in all of eternity past been a part, in, 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 not connected to God the Father, but because of what he did, he separated. He died spiritually, his human spirit. Why have you forsaken me? When he became sin, everything went dark and the Lord lifted him. And so he's for the first time in all of eternity, he's feeling alone. Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, look, he's calling for Elijah. Then some ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine, put it on a reed and offered him to drink, saying, let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. And then I want you to focus on this. That's why I highlighted it. Is it showing highlighted up there? It's not. Yeah, it is. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. I'm going to go ahead and finish with verse 39, but I want to go back to 38. When the centurion who stood opposite him saw that, saw that he cried out like this, uh, saw that he cried out like this and breathed this last, He said, this Roman centurion said, Surely this man was the Son of God. That acknowledgement. God just died for us. He didn't understand what, but he saw this is truly the Son of God. 
but it says that when Christ died, when He paid the price and He took the death penalty for you and for me, that the veil of the temple, the veil which separated the Holy of Holies, which is the presence of God Himself on the earth, which only the high priest could go in once a year to offer up sacrifices in the, in the lead up to the passion of Jesus. He would take the blood of the lambs, take that blood and, and put it on the altar. And he did that every year to temporarily remit sins. But Jesus came to atone sins. And it said, we read it, he died once and only once, once and for all for sin. So that veil that kept us because of our sin, and even the high priest had to go through a great period of cleansing and go in there to do that once a year, that veil that separated us, it's not just the high priest that goes in there now. That veil separated because now he brought us to God. He said that He did this to bring us to God. The veil that separated us from the presence of God has been torn and removed. And now we have been brought to God. And we bring, by believing in Jesus Christ and what He did, we bring the presence of God and He inhabits us. Not just the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, now he inhabits us and so that temple that hosted that ark in his presence we are the temple now the temples of his Holy Spirit of God himself because he brought us to God that is Good Friday and, and he sealed the deal and made it all possible because without the resurrection the death wouldn't forgive you need them both if Jesus tied them together, we need to tie them together, but we'll finish that next week. So why the cross? I conclude with this, Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. joy set before him is you. He died so that we could live. And for every person who confesses Jesus Christ as Lord, God rejoices. And so I'm going to pray a prayer for anyone who may be here or anyone who is watching. If this message has moved you and you have realized Jesus died for me so that I could live and I can, and He has brought me to God through His suffering. I want to receive that because this is the thing. God never forces Himself on anybody. He says He died once and for all and that His blood was for the sin, that death was for the sin of the whole world. But the, but the people in the world have got to choose that. He will not force Himself on anybody. We have to choose. One scripture in the book of Joshua says, Choose this day whom you will serve. What a great day to receive Christ. Or just to acknowledge your confession of your personal faith by repeating it out loud along with me. Uh, repeat it back. And anybody that's praying it from the heart, repeat it back. But let's all just repeat these words. Father God, I thank you for Jesus. I believe that He is the Son of God. He is God Almighty, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the Savior of the world. I believe that He did save us by the suffering He suffered, by the blood that He shed, and that that blood washes sins away. I believe that Jesus did it for me. So Jesus, I receive you into my heart as my Savior 
and my Lord. Cleanse me from my sin, I pray. Cleanse me from unrighteousness. Forgive me, I pray. And Lord, live in my heart because I give it to you. Now, Lord, because I've prayed this, Lord, because I've prayed this, I know I'm a child of God. I will live forever with you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving me. I praise you and worship you. My King, my Savior, my God. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, please let me know. If you rededicated your life to the Lord through that prayer, reconnecting to Him, please let me know. If I can do anything to help you in your walk with Jesus Christ, I want to do that. And if you have prayed that prayer for the first time, get a Bible. I know they're so easy to get to, but get hold of a Bible. If you need me to help you get one, I will. And read a chapter of day from the book of John, the Gospel of John. And over the next 21 days, you'll get to know your Lord and your Savior better. 